Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Shannon Ogden with the latest from Denver 7. What happens over the next 24 hours could dramatically change life in our Colorado. There are about 125 bills left to be heard before the General Assembly wraps up at midnight tomorrow. Some of the bills will make it, others will not make it. Denver 7's Megan Lopez is following the final hours at the State House. On the Senate floor today, it sort of sounded like a cattle auction with how fast bill titles were being read. A symbol for the mind-numbing pace the end of this session seems to be moving at. Time is kind of one of the things that we are lacking right now with less than 48 hours. Democrats were able to bring several more big bills to the governor's desk today, including one to automatically register drivers with a Colorado license to vote, and another to end out-of-network health care costs. But not everything was successful. Uh, I move uh, House Bill 1312. Labor until tomorrow. The vaccination bill that led to late night debates in a packed Colorado State Capitol last night. All those in favor say aye. aye. Is dead. Something Republican senators are calling a win. I think this is a triumph for a bunch of moms and dads who drove up here, who got up early and stayed up late, and slept in the building, and to make their voice heard. Senator Owen Hill says those stall tactics are starting to pay off. Approve the success of that strategy, that people better choose very clearly what big changes they want to make. And if you choose that one, you need to walk away from some of the other big changes. But no amount of stalling could stop the sexual education bill from moving on. 1032 is adopted. After a second vote in the Senate Thursday, its fate will be decided Friday. Democrats say they don't want to limit debate, but will if it comes to that. We tend to use that as a last resort option. I mean, obviously, we have to take that into consideration when those in the minority party are reading um, bills at length or at nauseam. They're hoping to get as much as possible done by the stroke of midnight on Friday, but it will be up to the governor to decide if they've done enough. Obviously, if the governor calls us back to work, uh, we'll be here. Uh, but I think I recognize that in 120 days, we should be able to accomplish the work that we need to get done. Megan Lopez. Mark Kennedy will be the next president of the University of Colorado system. Right. Board of Regents yeah. made it official today with a 5-4 vote along party lines. Five. Winning the hearts and minds of students and faculty may not be so easy. A recent survey shows the campus had serious doubts that Kennedy was the right person for the job. Most of the concerns stem from his conservative voting record while in Congress. And Kennedy has insisted his views have evolved since. And there will be a place for all under his leadership. I am fully committed to making sure that all of our faculty, staff, and students and the broader community have my full support and my respect for their dignity no matter who they love or how they identify themselves. Kennedy will take the reins in July. He will be paid $650,000 for the first year, then $850,000 a year going forward. Well, after beating cancer, how hard can running for president be? Colorado Senator Michael Bennett made it official today. He will seek the Democratic nomination for 2020. In an interview this morning, Senator Bennett revealed he intends to focus his campaign around economic inequality and restoring integrity to politics. A gun owner's rights group is challenging Colorado's new red flag law in court. They are, they're trying to convince a judge the law itself is not unconstitutional. Instead, they're arguing that Democrats broke the rules to get it passed. Rocky Mountain gun owners claim that Democrats violated the state constitution by denying Republicans' request to read the bill in full on the floor of the House. Even without the legal challenge, the law has its share of opposition. 38 of Colorado's 64 counties have signaled they will not support it and may not enforce it. Seems like every day a new apartment complex or business is opening in our Colorado, but Castle Pines really has been the exception until now because construction is beginning on a new neighborhood and when developers are finished, thousands more will call it home. Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski shows us how the city plans to handle all the congestion that will come with it. Just over our 10-year mark. For the young city of Castle Pines, these are the sounds and views of its future. We're really building the city of Castle Pines. You're looking at the start of the canyon's neighborhood, just east of the Castle Pines Parkway exit off I-25. So the overall property, which is 3,400 acres, currently allows for 3,500 homes. This is the largest of three development projects, with the potential to more than double the number of homes here. And we really want the folks that live here to be able to stay here. Sam Bishop is the Director of Community Development. Yep, so these are the first two model homes from uh, Shea Homes. He says they hope to turn Castle Pines into a destination, 
with new restaurants, businesses, and unique experiences. Amenities, he says, they struggle to attract with their current population of 11,000. The old adage is roof, retail follows rooftops. There's not that many tenants. There's a lot of open buildings available. Sitting outside this now vacant Safeway store. Everyone doesn't want to see empty shops in the community. Homeowner Todd Hyman Briscoe is ready for the growth. If we could have more shops, that would make us feel more like a, a Castle Pines community. But not everyone feels the same way. It's just too many people. Like many Colorado natives, Chair Slidell is worried about the added traffic, especially on already jam-packed I-25. It's ridiculous. I mean, the traffic is horrible. There's no, it's just absolutely a nightmare. Through the city of Castle Pines, I-25 is currently eight lanes wide. We feel like there's enough volume and capacity to handle additional development. Bishop says the city is committed to thoughtful growth while still keeping know. Castle Pines small town vibe. But we don't want to be Parker, we don't want to be Lone Tree. We want to have our unique identity. Here's how quickly things are changing out here. Shea Homes plans to open their models this summer with the first 400 homes going up by the end of the year. Home prices range from the upper 400s to over a million. I'm Jennifer Kowaleski, Denver 7. And from the First Alert Weather Center, let's take a quick look at your seven day forecast. It is absolutely a stunning run up into the weekend, through the weekend, even into Monday. And then things change as they tend to do in spring here in Colorado. We're looking at maybe even some snow mixed with the rain in the middle of next week. Now, this has been your Denver 7 on demand update. Thank you for watching. We'll have another one for you later tonight. Download also the Denver 7 app. You'll get breaking news and alerts. I'm Shannon Ogden.